Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an Airbus pilot and welcome to our taxi tutorial in the Flyby-Wire Airbus A380. We are going to start this tutorial with a little bit of theory, then we will talk about a couple of the differences between the Flyby-Wire A380 and the real A380 in the version that is current at the time of this recording. And last but not least, we are going to taxi out to our departure runway, which is going to be 3-4 right here in Seoul. So let's start with a couple of basics and first of all we want to talk about how to taxi a large aircraft like the A380. If we take a look outside you can see that the aircraft does indeed have a very long distance between the main gears and the nose gear. The main gear however are the widest point on the aircraft. We need to keep the main gear on the taxiway and therefore the nose wheel needs to overshoot so that we can keep the mass of the aircraft over the taxiway. Likewise, we have four engines on this aircraft. Now, not all airports will be able to provide you with a taxiway where the outer engines can be over a paved area instead of just hanging over grass. Therefore, you might have to use only the two inner engines with increased thrust during the taxi and leave the outer engines at idle. Now let's talk about the brakes. The maximum brake temperature for takeoff is 300 degrees and the brakes on the A380 do warm up quite well. The main factor that influences how quickly the brakes are heating up is the number of brake application. Not the brake pressure used and not the length of the application, but the number of applications. The actual temperature increment is going to vary depending on the brake manufacturer, therefore no general statement can be made over here. Now, let's talk about the speeds. The aircraft can accelerate up to 30 knots on long straight taxiways as long as there is no constraint from air traffic control. If the speed exceeds 30 knots and the aircraft is still accelerating, the pilot flying should use one smooth brake application to decelerate back to 10 knots and then accelerate again. If the aircraft maintains taxi speed as it does during the higher weights, then you don't need to do this. In general, attempt to minimize the number of brake applications by using your engine thrust carefully and with a little bit of thought of what's going to happen next. Now, speed limitation, 30 knots on long straight taxiways, 8 to 10 knots before initiating sharp turns, 15 on the apron and 50, 5, 0 when backtracking a runway. Now, the A380 is equipped with body wheel steering that limits the drag during the turn and therefore the aircraft speed should not decrease in a turn. However, the Flyby Wire A380, at least in the original release version that I'm using to record this, has substantial drag in turns and therefore you need to adjust the thrust in order not to come to a stop. In general, you should avoid bringing the aircraft to a stop in a turn as this has the adverse effect of needing a severe amount of thrust to get the aircraft moving again. Last but not least, Let's talk about how to steer the aircraft. So, the aircraft is equipped with a steering wheel on the left side as well as a steering wheel on the right side. You want to make smooth, continuous inputs on the steering wheel. I know a lot of flight simmers tend to do stuff like this and just move the wheel around. That is not what you do. You make one smooth input, hold it as the aircraft goes to a turn, and then smoothly return back to center. Don't do this, but do this. So, when you need to do a sharp turn, then you should initiate the turn when the taxiway center line is about a beam your shoulder through the side window. Of course, this needs to be adjusted depending on the actual width of the turn. So for example on this turn over here we'll probably not need to do it but when we go a sharp 90 degree turn somewhere over there then we probably need to um, apply the correct technique. Last but not least 
let's talk about the seating position. So in the version that's current at the time I'm recording this, the default seating position is very low. So we should adjust that upwards a little bit, basically to somewhere over here, so where you can just barely make out the bottom of the glare shield. This of course means you will be able to see quite a bit more right in front out of your window. If the seating position is correct, your cutoff angle is around 19 degrees, which equates to about 21 meters ahead of your aircraft. Just look at the taxiway over here and where the two taxi lines split, and now look outside and how far in front of your aircraft that actually is. That's about here. So this entire area here is not visible from inside the flight deck. All right. So last but not least, if you have an active Navigraph subscription, you can use the Onboard Airport Navigation System, OANS. You access this through the range selector on the EFIS control panel by rotating it below the number 10, which goes into the zoom selection. Now it takes a little while for the OANS to load up, but once it's loaded up, you will have your airport's ground chart available right in front of you on the navigation display, which makes it a lot, lot easier to taxi the aircraft. Depending on how complex the airport is, it takes a little time to load, but here we go, and here we've got it available. So, let's go ahead and taxi to our departure runway. Our runway is going to be 3-4 right over here, and we are standing up here. So the green area marks the taxiways that we can use in the Airbus A380. The red ones mark the areas that we cannot use in the A380. So we must not taxi, for example, over here on that taxiway, but much rather we should choose one of those two. I am going to go for the shallow turn here and take that taxiway up to November and then on to our holding point. Well, maybe we take Mike instead so that we have a bit of straight distance over here to straighten the aircraft out. Especially when you are not used to taxiing an aircraft this size, do your things slowly and steadily. All right, so we've got our taxi chart over here. So we go straight onto the left and then bring it all the way to the holding point. So, let's bring ourselves back into the optimum seating position over here, and then we look out to the left, clear on the left side, check to the right, clear on the right side, nose light goes to taxi, and the turn off and camera light goes on. If a future version of the 380 is equipped with a taxi camera, make sure that it is selected up here. Alright, park and brake released, then let's go. When we initiate our taxi, smoothly add a little bit of thrust until the aircraft starts moving. Don't use excessive thrust, but use the minimum required to get your plane moving. Once the aircraft is moving, we are going to conduct a brake check, and when we do the brake check, we are looking at the brake pressure accumulator to make sure that we do not see any increment in the pressure. I'm going to do it now, watch the pedal. So brake check, pressure zero. The reason we want to see zero pressure is that the brake pressure accumulator shows us the standby hydraulic system, and we want to make sure that our brakes have transitioned to the primary system. That is the reason for the brake check, and that is the reason why we want to see pressure zero on the indicator as we conduct the check. So we're about to start our first turn. We got to overshoot a little bit with the nose wheel so that the main wheels end up on the center line. In the absence of the taxi camera, we've just got to develop a bit of judgment over here. Personally, and this is an unofficial technique, what really helps me is to put the aircraft into the turn and then imagine where the point around which I'm turning is located. That point is usually the main gears, so that way you can easily get the grips of taxiing your aircraft. Now, what helps as well from time to time is to go to the outside view and check what you see over there to make sure that your aircraft is indeed in the position where you want it to be. And as you can see, that is pretty much the case over here. Now, if you want to know whether you're on the taxiway center line, there's a very easy way to determine this. 
simply put the center line in between the two displays and then you are taxiing right on the center line. That's the trick behind this. So once the aircraft is moving we can go ahead and carry out our taxi procedures. So first of all we are going to review the takeoff briefing as needed and in this case we have no changes to what we have briefed on on the gate earlier so nothing we need to do. So next up let's go ahead and run our taxi flow. The taxi flow is a fairly easy one and we are going to have a look at it right now. So you start right here above the gear lever and only once the flight control track is completed we are going to turn the or brakes into the takeoff position. Then we move down check that our squawk is correctly set, move up onto the surveillance page and over here we can activate the weather radar as needed. Note that the present version at the time of this recording does not actually feature the weather radar simulated so we do not have a weather radar available right now. As we are on the page already we can turn our TCAS into TARA and select the above mode as that shows us more relevant traffic for our departure. Last but not least when we're finished over here we go to the ECAM memo and you can see we still have the takeoff config test in blue so we are going to press the takeoff config test and verify that the ECAM memo goes all green. When that is completed we can call for the taxi checklist. So checklist taxi checklist. Let's go over it. Flight controls are checked. Flap setting config 1 plus F and we can verify that on our performance page where 1 is indeed the selected configuration. Radar currently not simulated so we'll just assume it on and you can see that the ECAM memo is automatically checked so that's our taxi checklist completed. Alright, we are approaching a steeper turn over here. So this one is a 90 degree angle. So the speed is between 8 and 10 knots and we wait until the center line is around a beam our shoulder and then we smoothly and steadily initiate the turn. Note that in the fly-by-wire A380 at the moment you need a bit of additional thrust and the real one that is not the case so I do expect that fly-by-wire is eventually going to fix this so depending on when you are watching the video you want to um, check yourself if you still need that thrust or not. Alright, so this concludes our taxi procedures. Next up we are going to taxi towards the runway, do our lineup and when the lineup is completed, then we are going to um, finish this lesson. First of all though, let's go ahead and approach the second turn, or the second 90 degree turn, and we are once again going to talk over the appropriate technique for driving around the corner. So, I will do this with the tiller visible down here. We take the second turn, and first of all ensure our aircraft is within an acceptable speed range. So I'm breaking it back down towards 10 knots right now. Approaching the turn, watch what I'm doing with the tiller. So I'm initiating the turn smoothly. Make sure we keep the speed and look at what I'm doing with the tiller. It's remaining on the same location and I only adjust it when I figure that I need to adjust my turn rate. Once we're approaching the end of the turn, smoothly and steadily roll out of the turn and go back to the neutral tiller position. And that is how you drive an aircraft. If you do rapid movements, it will not only smack the champagne of your first class guests, but it will also just result in skidding nose wheels and generally incorrect behavior of the aircraft. Last but not least, approaching the hold short line, make sure that we taxi close enough to the line, the A380 is big enough, 
So you might want to look out to the side a little bit in order to be sure that we actually taxi all the way up to the line. So here we are. The line is located just about at the um, line of that speaker over here. And if we now go to the outside view and cross check our taxi, you can see we are just about short of the actual taxi, a um, whole trot line. So that's going to be it for the taxi tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that you have learned something today. Be sure to leave your like, comment and subscribe. And if you're up for more, I would appreciate a small donation through the Buy Me Coffee link in the video description below. Thank you very much for watching and I'm looking forward to see you all again on the next one.